Some of these fabrication tips aren't very well known, but no gatekeeping here. I'm gonna explain them the best that I can. Also, tip number five might blow your mind enough to make you send this video to someone else, and I'll throw in some bonus tips along the way. So without any more lollygagging or dilly-dallying, let's get right into it. First, I'll show you how to lay out the center of any circle using only a square and a marker, and I'll show you using this unnecessarily heavy piece of steel. stainless plate. So grab a straight edge, throw it anywhere across the circle, and draw a line from one side to the other. I'm using a nice even 14 inches, because what you're going to do next is mark center. So seven is where I put my mark on both of those lines. Then I'm going to square out from that center mark and draw another line towards the middle of that circle, and where they both intersect, that is the center of your circle every time. You can do it a third time to triple check. There's a second method. You can put the corner of your square anywhere on that circle, do it again, and draw your 90 degree angle like this. After that, you're gonna connect the two points where your lines intersect the edge of the circle, and where those two lines intersect is the middle of your circle like this. And if your circle's way too big for a square, you could use a three line laser for this as well. Quick tip for you. A lot of screwdrivers are actually manufactured so that a box wrench fits right around the handle like this. That way, if you get a tight screw, you can focus all your effort on applying pressure and still get a good bit of torque on the screwdriver. Or you can just grab an adjustable and do the same thing on the shaft of the screwdriver. Method number two is how you keep your project square using only a tape measure. And this isn't specific to metal fabrication. It's a general layout tip that could have many different use cases, uh, carpentry, landscaping, interior design. As long as you have a tape measure, you can make a perfect right angle no matter how big your project. I know I explained this one on Instagram, so if you're not following me over there, you might want to if this stuff interests you at all. So it doesn't matter how big your project is. Uh, if you're a fabricator, the three, four, five method is definitely one you wanna keep in your back pocket. First off, most people probably already know that if you measure opposite corners to opposite corners, as long as those numbers are the same, your project is square. But if you just want to make a right angle or your project is too big for a square, you can use the numbers three, four, and five to check for square. I'm going to measure three inches out on the one leg, and then I'm going to go measure four inches out on the other leg. And if the distance between those two is five, then you know your project is square. But that's a pretty small sample size. Of course, you could use feet or meters or any unit of measure. I'm just going to multiply those numbers by four. So three times four is 12. Mark that on one leg. And then four times four is 16. I'll mark that on the other leg. And then five times four is 20. So if the distance between those two is 20, then I know my project is square. These three numbers are Pythagorean triple. Other Pythagorean triples you can use are 5, 12, and 13, 21, 20, 29, or 15, 8, and 17. Or you can just measure out the same distance on both legs, let's say 10 inches, and then multiply that number by 1.414, so that'd be 14.14. And if that is your distance between, then you know you have a right angle. You might not know this about a speed square, and if you don't have one of these in your tool set, you might want to throw one in. Obviously, you can mark a 90 degree angle on stock. You can also mark long ways to rip stock. And of course, there's the uh, 45 degree angle. A lot of people don't know is you can make any custom angle on your stock if you use this pivot point and these degree markings over here. So if I wanted to do a 22 and a half degree miter angle here to butt two pieces up and make a 45 degree corner, what I would do is rotate on the pivot point until my 22 and a half degree marking intersects this line and scribe that over here. That's a 22 and a half degree line. Also, if you need to find slope, you can do that using these degree markings as well. Let's try it out. You do need a plumb bob for this one. Uh, use that pivot point, hang your plumb bob. Of course, if it's level, it'll fall across the 45 degree marking. But right now that string falls across the 40 degree marking. That's five degrees off of the 45. So this is a five degree slope right now. Quick tip for you. Whenever you measure between two similar objects, two pipes or two holes, and if they are the same size, don't measure center to center like this because it's hard to eyeball exactly where that center is. Instead, measure side to side, you know, left side to left side or right side to right side. It's much easier to see exactly where the side falls on your tape measure. So if I want to get a center to center measurement on the holes of this flange, I could eyeball the actual center to actual center, or I could do this instead, just burn one inch, and then I can see exactly where it falls. So from left side to left side of hole, uh, burn the one inch, 
it looks like five and three quarter exactly. So minus an inch is four and three quarter center to center. Number four, a unique way to find top dead center uh, or any degree on a pipe or something round. All right, most pro tradesmen carry these center finders. That allows them to find and punch any degree around that circle. I'll link these down below if you're interested. They are pretty handy. I'll also link my entire tool set down there so you can browse that if you're interested. But there is a way to do the exact same thing with just a square and a level. First thing you want to do is find the OD or outside diameter of your pipe. Uh, mine's six and three quarters, so for the sake of this video, I'll mark three and three eighths. Then slap a level on top of your square, and once that thing is leveled out, wherever your mark is, is top dead center of your pipe. Of course, you can do this trick for the sides and the bottom too. And if you have a 45 degree angle on your level, you can mark all four 45 degree points. Also, if you have one of these fancy levels with the protractor feature, now you're able to mark any degree around the entire circle. For example, this is a 20 degree mark. Number five, before I blow your mind, I just wanna say if you hated this video, don't wanna see another one like it, be sure to not subscribe. That lets me know to stop wasting my time. However, if you found any of this useful, sub, comment, maybe go back and watch one part that helps the video out. I appreciate it. Uh, tip number five, you're going to need a plumb bob for this one. You want to hang it above your workpiece and you want to try to center it up as best you can. Uh, never mind that I tied the plumb bob like an idiot just for the sake of this video. The string's supposed to be down through the center so that it hangs straight. Also, you always want to wear the proper PPE on your feet. Uh, shops are a dangerous place. So when your plumb bob is centered and you might have to adjust it a few times, you might have to stop it from shaking. But when you finally get it set right, uh, take your tape measure, uh, pull it out so you can see the numbers. However far it is from the tip of your plumb bob to your pipe, that's how far it is from your plumb bob to your pipe. But follow for more pro tips.